battered and bruised, both Baghdad and its residents, who flooded not only hospital beds, but also its morgues. The violence so evil it targeted a slew of packed spots, leisure halls in a city bereft of entertainment venues, popular restaurants, and even a funeral wake in the western neighborhood of Shala was not spared. Wherever there's a crowded place, they strike. May God punish those who did it. We ask only God to help. Because we can't wait for any help from the government. We elected them, but they still fight each other for the sake of getting positions, and the poor people, they're the one who suffer. And to God, these mourners have turned. Another funeral procession in a city that's seen similar marches for days now. Scenes reminiscent of the ugly times of sectarian violence many had hoped were now in the past. Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki condemned the attacks as the work of, quote, terrorists and the supporters of the ousted regime. They're utilizing whatever might they have and the cheapest methods to stop the political process and the government formation, which has become a pressing demand and necessity, because they've seen that we have begun to have some progress and that we are nearing the government formation. He also said he's issued strict orders to the security forces to step up their act, or else violators will be considered, quote, partners in the terrorists' heinous crimes. Renewed anger at Iraq's security forces, who people say have once again failed them. The attacks span the entire city, and many are asking just how did the assailants manage to go through the numerous checkpoints that dot the city with that amount of explosives? Where do they keep getting this bottomless supply of ammunition from? And when will this bloodshed end? Rawi Raghah Al Jazeera, Baghdad.